So, um, my name is Raymond. I've made a few videos before uh, in regards to the uh, mail program for the um, Class D pre-trip inspection. So, right now we're updating to what has recently changed uh, since the mail program was designed in 2017. Uh, and uh, there's been a few changes that, that I'm updating right now to the previous video. Again, there might be some changes. Do not totally rely on the video, although the video should be up to date right now as we're doing it. So, this is the truck that we use for a DZ. It's actually a very, very short truck. It's equipped with a hydraulic uh, brakes and it's an automatic truck. So we use this for the D, for the C, and for the B, and the E, and the F as well. So this is the truck that we use for the uh, D-Class. And then if you want to do the AZ, then we have these trucks here, which we have a, a 13 speed, an 18 speed, and, a, and a, an automatic truck. Uh, but for now, we're going to do the inspection on here. So this here is your lock book. This is done daily every 24 hours. So the date of the roll test, I'm going to fill it out for you. And you're just going to sign it here, anywhere here, that we should not be up to date. Now, the logbook is based on what the pre-trip is all about. So the pre-trip is here. This is the list here of what you should inspect on the truck, which is in English and in French. So this, this logbook is the same as this page here, which is be called Schedule 1. Now, if you're doing a C-Class, you're going to need a, uh, a different schedule, which will be a Schedule 2. If you're doing a B, it'll be a Schedule 3 and 5, so on and on. And on. So, uh, a lot of the times, as I'm teaching, a lot of the students will ask me the same question over and over. Am I allowed to use this at the test? Yes. Um, could I read it? Yes. Should I have it with me? Yes. So, what you will do is three things according to what the examiner is going to ask you. So, technically, you're not performing a pre-trip. You're just demonstrating based on what we taught you when the truck gets there, I'm the one doing the pre-trip. So it is the computer technically asking you six questions. It's not the examiner that decides what they wanna ask you. Now, in the six questions, you must perform a demonstration first, and then anything that is on that specific item, you would read out what would be a minor defect or what would be a major defect and what you would do upon findings of defects. So the random questions, but always there's gonna be a question on the wheel, for sure. Now, we call this wheel, but for the uh, ministry or, or the drive test, this is not a wheel, this is a tire and this is a wheel. Uh, there could be other questions as well, which we don't know, but your job is to learn everything. Now, in some cases, uh, you might get nervous, you might get stuck or whatever, take your time. You're entitled to 20 minutes, 15 minutes in the exterior, and five minutes in the interior. So I'll break it down to you. When you show up for the roll test, you're gonna have this with you, and you're gonna have the logbook. There's gonna be a hammer supplied to you, and there's gonna be a pair of gloves. The examiner is going to approach you, he's going to verify your name, and then he's gonna ask if you're ready. Once you're ready, he will start asking the question. Now, the way they ask the question is the same way I'm gonna do in this video, to make it easy for you. Again, you're allowed to use this, and you should. Try to use only the keywords that are here. Make it easy for you, okay? The one thing you have to practice is once you do a class, always say what a minor defect would be and what you would do, which would be report it, record it, continue driving, major defect, report it, record it, out of service. So we'll start right now with the one that most students have issues with, which is the wheel. So any question the examiner asks you in the wheel, whether it could be the wheel fasteners, how we oil level or wheel rim attaching components, the first thing you must do is turn the wheel, whichever. So if you're in this side right here, you're going to open the hood. The examiners do not redirect. What the redirect means, it doesn't tell you what to do. So if the examiner says, sir, can you demonstrate the wheel fasteners? Before I even go ahead and demonstrate, I wanna look at my list here and I wanna find the wheel fasteners. So I'm gonna go wheel fasteners and then I'm gonna see here in blue, it says the wheel has loose missing or ineffective fastener. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to pop the hood open. And this is to do a proper demonstration. The hood is gentle, I'm going inside the cab. And 
Turn the key on, obviously. Start the truck. Turn the wheel where the wheel is facing you. So now, we're going to do check the wheel fast. So I usually like to put my schedule one here, make it easy for me. So I'm going to look if the wheel has loose missing effective fasteners. So here I am. There is no loose missing or ineffective fasteners. No loose missing and effective fasteners. Touch this one as well here. Not loose, missing, ineffective fasteners. Now, before we check the back for the bearing, we're gonna push the tire like this, right? And the idea to push the tire is if at the back you have a bearing that is already damaged and there's oil, you're pushing the oil out. So right after you push it, now I'm gonna look at the back, I'm gonna make sure there's no evidence. Evidence could be any oil leaks, or any debris, or any oil and metal combined together. So you're gonna put your hand, you can wear a glove if you like. You're gonna put your hand at the back here. You're gonna go like this, and you're gonna show the examiner that there's no evidence of hub wheel bearing failure. So this time, I've done my demonstration, which is good. So now, I'm going to look on my schedule and I'm gonna see there's no minor defects for the wheel fasteners. So in this case, sir, there is no minor defects. However, if the wheel has loose, missing, or an effective fastener, or if there is any evidence of imminent wheel or have a bearing failure, that will be a major defect. There's three things I'm gonna tell the examiner. And you can say minor and major defects at any time, as many times as you like. So major defect, record it in my data lockbook, report it to the operator, and out of service, okay? We're gonna do another one on the wheel. Is that okay, the wheel? So we're going to check the hub wheel oil level and leaks. So in this case, this one here is fitted with the side glass, which means that you're able to see. In some cases, in the newer ones, you cannot see it, but this one has one. And a side glass means you can see. So first, we're gonna identify the level and you can see here a line, and that tells you add. So you can see the oil there, so you're gonna tell the examiner my hub wheel oil level is above the minimum. Then you're gonna take the seal off or the, or the seal hub, you're gonna put the finger inside, and then what are we looking for, Patrick? Debris or metal shavings? Metal shaving, metallic. So we wanna see if there's any metal or any change in colors. But what you're looking for is to see if there's any damage on the bearing, in which case there is not. So you're going to tell the examiner, sir, there's no debris, there's no metal, there's no grinding on the uh, on the oil. Put this back, and then we're gonna check for any leaks. I'm gonna have a rag here ready for you, at no cost, okay? So now we're gonna put it back, and we're gonna say there's no damages in the seal, and there's no leaks. What's the next thing we're gonna do? Kick the tire. Now, I usually don't like kicking the tire. You can, I'm sorry, like pushing it, so you can kick it. And then we're gonna check at the back to make sure there is no evidence of imminent wheel hub or bearing failure. So in this case, there is no bearing failure or damage, or so there is no evidence. Evidence means the same thing as oil leaks or, or uh, debris or metallic. So now, we're done demonstrating. We're going to look at the minor defects under the hub wheel oil level, and here it is, and it says hub oil below indicated man level when fitted with side glass which is talking about this or leaking wheel seal which is this that would be a minor defect which means i would record it in the logbook report it to the operator and continue driving however if there is any evidence of imminent wheel hub bearing failure that would be a major defect i'm going to record it in my logbook report to the operator and auto service so now we've done two questions so far on the wheel there's one more this one more it really makes no sense the way they ask it they can ask it many different ways but you just got to say they ask you to check for the uh real wheel, wheel rim uh we're talking about the wheel rim and attaching components so basically if we're going to check the wheel rim for attaching components you will see here it says damage crack or broken wheel rim or attaching part so in this case it's the whole thing so you're gonna say there's no cracks there's no damage is broken there's no broken wheel rim there's no cracks in between the fasteners there's no damage hub no oil leaks no damage attaching part 
the fasteners are not loose, missing. When effective, fasteners are not loose, missing. When effective, air valve is not damaged. And then you're gonna look at the back of the wheel as well. And you're gonna say there's no damage crack or broken wheel rim. Then, obviously now you know, <laughs> we're gonna kick it and we're gonna look for any evidence. And there is no evidence of imminent wheel hub bearing failure. Now, for the students that have a hard time with the language, English should not be an issue because it is not an English test. It's a, it's a pre-trip test. So you can just say the keyword, which is no bearing failure. The bearing is when it is damaged. But by you saying evidence, talking about oil or any debris that you will find. So that's it. So we're done demonstrating. Now, we look at your schedule and we look under here and there's nothing here that talks about the wheel rim. So in this case, there's no minor defects. However, um, damage, crack or broken wheel rim or attaching part or evidence of imminent wheel hub bearing failure would be a major defect. I will record in my daily logbook, report of the operator and out of service. Now, take in mind that it does not matter where you test in Ontario, they will ask you one question in here. Okay, that is very challenging if you're not mechanically inclined, but watching this video should give you an idea of what you're looking for. If I had a photo of what bearing failure is, I will show you, but what bearing failure is when you have no oil, it's gonna grind and your wheel is gonna come off, okay? So we're done with the wheel rim. Now we're gonna move on to the suspension system. Now, as you see here, suspension system, there's three different colors. So we have yellow, we have blue, and we have green. So let's say, um, we're going to check the air suspension system. So in this case, this truck is equipped with our, not equipped with our brakes, so therefore there is no air suspension system. The air suspension system, to give you an example how they look, uh, let me take you over here. Uh, so it's a, it's a bag, and uh, this one is probably deflated by now, but that's, that's a deflated airbag right there. So that's your air suspension system. This one doesn't have it, so what are we going to do? You cannot tell the examiner, hey, it doesn't have it, so I went. No. So, in this case, we're going to check at the back to make sure first there is no air suspension system. We look in here, there is no air suspension system. Thank you. So now, what are we going to do? Because the airbag, it, it, it does not, look the same but it's built kind of the same material the same shape so we're going to use the tire as an example to say we're demonstrating for it, uh, any air suspension damage so we're gonna look at this again and we're gonna say there is no air leak in the air suspension system so there is no air leak in the air suspension system I like to put this again here and then uh, the airbag is not damaged patch cut bruise the prey or the frailer the freighted and securely mounted so I've used every single keyword that is in here, which is the right thing for you to do, and it makes it easier for you as well. So now we're going to read the minor defects and the major defects. So under the minor defect, air leak in the air suspension system, we'll report it in the deadlock book, report it to the operator, and continue driving. Major defects, damage, like patch, cut, bruise, debris, or deflated or insecurely mounted airbag, that would be a major defect. Recording the logbook, record, reporting operator, and out of service. So that will be for your air suspension. Now, normally, in most cases, if you're taking a truck to the road test that has air brakes, you will need to perform an air brake practical. One of the reasons as to why this school uses this truck, because it makes it easier for you to obtain your license. So we'll do the Z here, and we'll do the D here. But why I'm saying that is because some of the trucks, most of the trucks are equipped with the type of suspension. So this one here would be the spring. So we're talking about a spring leaf. So spring leaf is this one right here. It goes from one end to near the end. It's the longest part. So there could be two different questions in here. So let's say we're going to check for a broken spring leaf. There's three sentences you're gonna to have to learn and three things you need to know. The longest one, which is the one on the top, this is your main. So that's the main leaf spring. Now here, it says A, broken spring leaf. A, it stands for one. 
which it means in this case, you're allowed to drive a truck that has a broken spring leaf, as long as it's not the main one. However, if that leaf spring, it becomes shifted out of place, broken or missing, it becomes a major defect. Or if you have two that are not the main, broken becomes a major defect. So I make it simple. So all you're gonna do is three things. You're gonna say there is not a broken spring leaf, point out here, and then we're gonna check the, the main. And you're gonna say no crack broken on main leaf spring or more than one. Now we're gonna talk about the whole uh, system on the leaf spring. So we're gonna say part of the leaf spring suspension system is not shifted out of place, it's not missing, and it's not in contact. That's all it is, that's all you need to know. So three things, okay? So now, we're gonna go on your schedule again, and you're gonna read out to the examiner, a broken spring leaf, minor defect. Recorder in the daily lock book, report it to the operator, and continue driving. Crack or broken main leaf spring, or more than one broken spring leaf, part of the spring leaf suspension is missing, shift it out of place, or it is in contact with another vehicle component, so that's a major defect. I will record it in my daily lock book, report of the operator, and auto service. So we've done two parts already in the suspension. We got one more. Now let's say we're gonna do the suspension fasteners. So again, use the keywords that are in here because it makes it easy for you. So this is what you see highlighted in blue, okay? So it says here, suspension fastener, loose missing number, and we're gonna say no. So this here is the spring leaf, and this is the fasteners. So you're gonna attach every single one of them like this and say the suspension fasteners and exactly how I'm doing it, you can do the same thing. There's no difference. As long as you don't do it like this, right? <laughs> so the suspension fastener is not loose, missing or broken. This one here and the shape of a U, that's called the U-bolt. And you have two of them here. The U-bolt is not loose. This is your shock absorber. Some of the trucks don't have it, most of them have it. So you have a fastener here, and you're gonna say the fastener is not loose, missing, or broken. Fastener loose, missing, or broken. Now, I cannot reach out the back, but you're gonna point out here that the fastener is not loose, missing, or broken. And that's that. So now, look at me, beautiful. <laughs> so when you come to class, if it's winter, dress warm. And don't forget to bring me a coffee, right? Two creams. <laughs> and, and if it's summer, uh, don't come in your nice clothes because you're gonna get dirty okay this is this is not like you're technically a mechanic but this is why you're gonna get dirty too. and if you're ready to get dirty you ain't gonna get your license so okay sorry about that okay so now minor defect suspension fastener loose missing or broken recorder in the book or the daily life book reporter operator and continue driving loose your bolt major defect record it in the book port operator and auto serve it it seems simple it is, but take in mind that you're not a mechanic. And if you're not mechanically inclined, make sure you study these components, okay? It's not, an easy, it's not an easy test, it's not a hard test, but it is something you need to study. And by watching this video, it should give you a pass. Now, if you don't get it because you forget to say record and log it, remember to study that at home. So we've done the wheel, we've done the suspension, right? So we're gonna move on to the wheel now, the tire, I'm sorry, the tire. So again, column one, column two, column two. So we know the tires. So there's two different colors. Because the examiner may only ask, let, let's do the sidewall throw the tire. That must throw the sidewall of the tire. But in this case, what color is this? Green. It goes with this. So they can use any sentence here, but it doesn't mean you're just gonna check the sidewall throw the tire. You gotta check all of it. So this is a simple step. All you're gonna do is no, 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 no. And you can do it in any order. But every time you do it, it's three sides that you're gonna tie. So let's say we're gonna say the chop, check the side with the tire. And if the tire is not turned, do it. It makes it easy for you. So again, I'm gonna put this in here as if I was uh, doing a roll test. I'm gonna say no, I just had no damage thread. So this is the name here, this is the thread here. This is called thread. So you're gonna say no damage thread or sidewall like a wall. So this is the sidewall. So there's no damage on the sidewall. Wherever you start, you finish there. No damage sidewall. No damage thread. Inside, no damage sidewall. Now we're gonna go on to the next, and we're gonna say the tire thread depth is not, you can say it any other way, however you want, whatever you like. It's not less than wear limit, 
which in the front would be how much, Patrick? Three millimeters. Three millimeters, and what's the rear? 1.5. 1.5. Now, as you demonstrated the side wall of the tire, you must say the limit, and when you read the minor and major defects, you said as well, don't write anything in here because you won't be able to use this, but memorize it. So the tire thread depth is not less than wear limit, which would be three mm in the front, one point at the back. What else is say? Tire is, so tire is, is not in contact with any other component or any other tire in the mouth stop. Tire is not marked, not for highway use. Not marked, not for highway use. Not marked, not for highway use. Tire has no exposed cords or wires. No exposed cords on the thread or wires. No exposed cords on the inside. And then, let's see. So we completed every single item on the side one for the tire. Now, a lot of times, I would like to explain things a little bit more to justify and you understand what I'm teaching you. Not for highway use, if you look at your wheelbarrow at home, you'll say not for highway use. Not for highway use means this tire, if you say not for highway use, that road right there is considered a highway. Because if you ever got a ticket, you get a ticket, you'll say under the Highway Traffic Act. So if the tire has no marks not for highway, that means you cannot drive it on the street. It will be inside the yard. Of course, because tires are fabricated with metal, I'm sorry, with wires. So that's what you're looking for. Okay, so this tire is good. So now, we did finish demonstrating. Look at the examiner this way. Don't keep going back and you're done. Don't say if, what, whatever, I have, I don't, have, don't say none of that. Simply say, minor defect, damage, thread or sidewall of the tire, recorder in the book, recorder, recorder operator, and continue driving. Tire thread depth is less than the word limit, which is 3mm in the front, 1.5 the back. Uh, tires in contact with another tire or any vehicle component of the mud flap. Tires marked not for highway use. Tire has exposed cords and the thread or also wall area. Major defects. Recorder in my book or daily logbook or put a radar in. Out of service. We good? All right. We're going to do the tire pressure. Now, again, use the keywords that are in here. Easy come, easy go. So here it says flat tire. If the tire leaking cannot be heard or felt. So we're gonna do the flat tire. We're gonna check tire. It's not flat. Then we're gonna do it separate, not together. We're gonna put our hand, if you have a glove, that's why I'm not wearing gloves to make it easy for you guys. So make sure that after you get your hands dirty, don't go like this and pick your nose, because then it's gonna get sick, okay? And that's not gonna be my fault. So this is where you will feel many leaks. So you would say, I do not feel, because sometimes you might say, I can't, I can't, that means you're not individually can. So I don't feel any leaks on the sidewall. I don't feel any leaks on the thread. I don't feel any leaks inside. Now we're gonna see, we're gonna, I don't hear any leaks on the sidewall. I don't hear any leaks on the thread. I don't hear any leaks on the sidewall. That, so that's my tire pressure. Again, laundry tire. Um, tire leaking, if leak cannot be heard, would be a minor defect. Report it, record in the daily logbook, report it to the operator and continue driving. Flat tire, tire leaking, if leak cannot be felt or hurt, that would be a major defect. Record in the book, record operator and out of service. Now, if you don't know that flat tire is a major defect, you have a problem, a serious problem. <laughs> okay, so we've done, this is the most challenging for most people. And that's why we started out the video this way. Uh, th this is the one that it's all, it's all training and practice, but this is very important for you to learn, okay? So we've done the sidewall, we've done the thread, we've done the tire, we've done the suspension. All right, let's do the frame and cargo body. Now, the examiner is not gonna say, demonstrate frame and cargo. The, the examiner might just say, hey, check the frame or check the body. How do you know that you have to do the whole thing? Because when you see different colors, that means there's different questions. For us, there's no other colors, like here, that means you have to do the whole columns. So let's check visibly shifted. Shifted is when it's this way. Crack, obviously it's when it's cracked. Collapsing is like a building falling. And sagging is when you're dragging. So we're gonna make sure that it's not visibly. So you can just go, this is here. So the biggest part in that truck, obviously you're not gonna be doing your road test with us. Uh, and if you are, thank you. 
uh, but this is the biggest part of the metal. That's your frame, like your like your body. So you're gonna say the frame is not basically shift the crack collapsing, sagging, and point out like this. You're only gonna do one side, okay? And you're only gonna do the side that the examiner will ask you. You're gonna crawl underneath here and point out here that the frame is not visibly shifted, crack collapsing or sagging. You come underneath here, the frame is not visibly shifted, crack collapsing, sagging. And then at the back, if you're driving a, a truck, like a straight truck, a box truck, you gotta make sure the back is secure. Uh, if, you're, if you're driving a flatbed, obviously there's nothing to check. So there's no new damages. And if you're doing a class C, which we should do, then you're looking for body parts, like such as like the uh, compartment door and all that. But let's make it easy. So no, no new damage, because you're looking for new damage. No new damage in the cargo body. 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 And no damage in the cargo body. Easy. Like I said, you're gonna feel that this is the most challenging, but once you learn this, you'll be okay. So now, minor defect. Damaged frame or cargo body. Recorded in the book, report operator, and continue driving. However, visibly shifted, crack, collapsing, or sagging frame member is a major defect. Recorded in the book, report operator, and out of service. All right, let's do, you know, this is, there's no order. This is why we teach you this way, because in the test, you're not doing a pre-trip, you're just demonstrating that you know how to do a proper pre-trip. So let's do the glasses and mirrors. When they're referring glasses and mirrors, I thought they were referring to the whole glasses, no. The mirror, they call the glass as well. So there's two different colors here. Glass is a mirror. So this is securely attached. This is only in the exterior. And as you're performing a pre-trip in the exterior, they will never ask you to do the interior. So if you're outside, you're gonna check the security attached. If you're inside, they provide clear view. So very simple, three things you're gonna do. And in this case, you have to do all the mirrors. But when it comes to the tire and the rim, it's just one, unless they ask you for a second one. So this is the mirror. You're gonna look at it and say the mirror is not cracked, damaged, securely attached. Battle mirror, not broken, damaged, securely attached. This is bracket, handle, however you wanna call it on. So securely attached. You see, we don't have one here, so we don't worry about that. You can call this convex if you're doing a B class or a C class, but you can just say mirror. So the mirror is not broken, damaged, securely attached. The bracket not broken, damaged, securely attached. Mirror not broken, damaged, securely attached. Battle mirror not broken, damaged, securely attached. Bracket, not broken, damage, secure, touch. Done. So now, require mirror or glass has broken damage attachment into vehicle body, minor defect. Recorded in the book, report operator, and continue driving. In this case, there is no major defect. Which means you can drive with no mirrors. It's okay. I mean, it's not like you're gonna be driving down the highway, right? That's just in case you go downtown. Not you, but somebody knocks off your mirrors. You know, you're not gonna call the tow truck, right? You can still drive. So in this case, there's no major defect. All right, let's do the exhaust, exhaust for leads. So now you have to make sure that when you go inside, you turn the defroster all the way on. And there's no sequence. You can do the inside first, or you can do the outside first. Personally, that's just me. I like to do the outside first and the inside. But you want to do the inside maybe, because a lot of times guys forget to do the inside. But let's do the outside first. So first, I'm going to turn the truck on. You don't need to sit down. This is your heat, obviously, you know, you live in Canada. This is the defroster sign. And then we're gonna turn the truck on. And we're going to turn the defroster. Let's do the interior first. So you're going to close your door right here. And if you have any windows open as well, and you're gonna put your nose in here. There is no smell of fumes, right? You cannot see any leaks because you cannot see air, but I cannot smell or see any smoke. Right, because you will be able to see smoke, but not air. We're gonna open the door. We're going in the exterior, watch yourself. After six o'clock, you're not insuring this company, okay? So if you hold, you know. <laughs> so, it is hard to see the turbo. Again, if you're not mechanically inclined, that's fine. But you will see here, inside there, that color that shows you that's the turbo right there. So there you'll see the exhaust all the way in here come out, and you're gonna point out there is no smoke. I don't see, I don't smell any smoke. I don't see any smoke. Same thing here. You can see the exhaust and the buffer. So there's no smoke, no leaks. Come on in here. There is no smoke, no leaks. Make sure that in the previous video, I do this. Because you want to make sure you come all the way at the back. If you go halfway, that's a fail. So if you come at the back here and there's no smoke. I don't see any smoke. I don't smell any smoke. It's good. So there's no smoke. Now, we're 
we're going to look at the exhaust. And we're going to say exhaust leak except as described in column three. You know what column three is? One, two, three. So that's all you have to say. Exhaust leak except as described in column three would be a minor defect. Report it, log it, continue driving. Which means you can have a leak in the exterior as long as it's not go inside. Leak that causes exhaust to enter the open bank compartment, talking about the inside the truck, that would be a major defect. Recording the book, report operator in, out of service. Okay, so far so good? Yeah, good, okay. Let's do the door. The door is under cab. Don't ask me why, but cab obviously has a door. Oh, you know why they say that? Probably because if you have a trailer with a door, you wouldn't have to check that. We just did the cab. Because it says cab, let me see cab. I'm really confused. Why do they put the door cab? Right here. So we're going to check the door. It says here, door fails to open, door fails to close security. So we're going to use those, key, those two keywords, simple. You're not looking for any damages or hinges because you're not doing frame and cargo body parts, okay? A lot of guys that I get from other places as well sometimes, they come with those ideas. You're just checking the door opens properly and closes securely. So this one doesn't close like this. So there's a switch up here, which is going to release, sorry. And now we're gonna close the door. So we're gonna use the two key words. Close the door, turn it, pull it. And when you pull it, you're gonna say the door does not fail to close securely or close, close the security. And then the door opens and closes. Now we're going to do the interior as well. Bring this back here. You turn the switch here. You just wait a minute. And then you push the door and you say door, close it securely and door opens properly, okay? Believe me, I know what you're thinking right now. It's a lot to learn. It took me more than, I would say, like five years to learn the whole program. It's not that easy. Uh, it is hard, but to teach it, at the beginning, was very difficult. And now, well, we got the best of it. So, so by watching the video, it should help you out. Um, and if you um, uh, forget to say something, some examiners will try to assist you in some ways. So, cab, occupant compartment door fails to open, minor defect. Record in the daily logbook, report operator, and continue driving. Any cab with sleeper door fails to close securely, that would be a major defect. Record in the book, report operator in, out of service. Okay, let's do the uh, hydraulic brake fluid level. Why? Because in this truck is not a good air base, so we're gonna check the hydraulic brake fluid level. Now. There's a whole bunch of list here of all items, but you're only gonna check these three items. But when you read the minor and the major defects, you're gonna read all of them. Why? Because you're not a mechanic. That's why. So it, it would um, it would be issues with legality as far as you're doing a road test with a third party, if you understand that. So in this case, you're only gonna check the three levels, right? So let's do the hydraulic brake fluid level. So you come up here. Now, in some cases, this the name is a reservoir. I think that's a French word, reservoir. So in this case, you cannot see the levels. So therefore, you have to open it, look inside, and then let me see what I'm saying. I'm saying my brake fluid level is above the indicated minimum. Then we're gonna say there is no brake fluid leaks, and then the brake fluid reservoir is not less than quarter full. So that's it. Now. We are going to read all the minor defects and all the major defects, although we didn't check them, but that's what it is because I'm a mechanic. So minor defect, brake fluid level, uh, brake fluid be or below indicated fuel level will be a minor defect. Record in the data lock book, report operator and continue driving. However, brake boost or power assist is not operative. Brake fluid leak, brake pedal fade was sufficient, brake fluid brake pedal reserve, activate other than ABS warning device, brake fluid reservoir is less than quarter full, full, parking brake is inoperative, inoperative. <laughs> Major defect, recorded in the daily lock book, report operator in, out of service. Okay, I think I'm doing a good job, don't you think? Hmm. Let me see, am I forgetting something here? So, we're almost done. It seems like a lot, but it's not. So like I said, the rest of the stuff is a flyby. Okay, so we're gonna do the fuel tank cap. Again, take in mind that they don't say check the whole fuel system. So missing fuel tank cap. So all you're gonna say is no, 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 simple. So you come over here. 
No missing fuel tank cap. Simple. No missing fuel tank cap. No insecure fuel tank and no fuel dripping leaks. So because you have the engine in the front and there is a line that comes this way, you may have a leak in the line, which in this case, in this weather uh, with the salt, it's very common to have a, a, a fuel line that is leaking. So you're gonna say there's no fuel leaks. If that is the first question, remember to open the hood. Now, I can't tell you where the fuel line is here, but you have to see here and see there's no fuel leaks. Then on the front here, there's no leaks underneath the engine, so there's no leaks, no fuel leaks. Then there's no fuel leaks. Simple. Now, same thing. Uh, missing fuel tank cap, minor defect. Recorder in the daily lock book, port operator, and continue driving. However, insecure fuel tank, dripping fuel leak, major defect. Put in the book, put in, auto service. So, remember to practice this, because it took me a while to learn. So now I'm gonna do a recap. Let me see if Patrick will assist me. Uh, we did the rim, we did the fasteners, a wheel oil level, sidewall throw the tire, tire pressure, uh, broken spring leaves, suspension fasteners, air ride, frame and cargo body, glasses and mirrors, missing fuel tank, etc. Did we miss anything? We're good, that was easy, okay, all right. By the way, if you're interested to come and see me, uh, we're located at 2300 Ship Avenue West. Our phone number is 416-875-6965. And hopefully you're liking this video. So now we're done. Again, the examiner does not redirect, but in some cases they do. Redirect means they're telling you what to do, not supposed to. If they do, they have to tell you. So we're going to close the hood and we're gonna to proceed to do the inside check. Now. And outside, there's only four questions. Remember that. Only four questions out of what we just did. Inside, you have to demonstrate inside cat, and there's two questions. So how many questions in total? Six. Okay, good. So we're going to put this away. Now, this is not a Volvo, okay? This is an American truck. So, and it's three different brands, Freightliner, Mercedes and Thomas, so it's put together like Frankenstein. That's how the Americans do it, you know, <laughs> seriously. So you hood latches here. Volvos are not like that, okay? But this is a good truck. So, okay, so now we're going to proceed the inside. So at this time, I always like to say that there is no sequence. But the reason why I say that is because when you do an inside inspection, if you forget something, you always can go back and rectify it. I like to close the door. Right now it's summer, which is nice. Usually we do videos in the winter, but we're gonna close it. So at this time, you won't be able to use your schedule, okay? But follow the sequence that I'm gonna show you and you should be okay. So now we're going to put this away and we're gonna start with the inside cap. So let me turn this wheel properly. Okay, I think we have lights on. Okay, so okay, so once you come inside the truck, now you're performing an inside cap. Does the examiner ask you? Yes, do you know what to do? Maybe, maybe not. However, the minute you come inside, you have to do this. Turn the key, uh, which mode? Run mode. So you see all these little lights? We call those indicator lights. So you have to say all indicator lights are working. Then you start the truck. And you're gonna start checking your gauges from the left to the right, if you wish. All you have to say is oil gauge is working, water gauge is working, transmission gauge is working, RPM. Don't don't go so hard like some guys that I know. Like, oh, that's it. We know it works, right? A speedometer. I'll let you know on the road. You can call it a speedometer, kilometers per hour. You can call it tachometer. The easiest one to say is speedometer. I'll let you know on the road. There's only one indicator light on, a parking brake light on. We have enough fuel for the trip. Now, if you forget any of this, like uh, uh, an indicator light, that's a mark. You lose two marks, you're done. And it depends on the examiner as well. So we've done this part. This is called a steering column, like your back. Steering column secured to the cab. A steering wheel secured to the column. One hand, two fingers. Don't do this because you're not. this is not acceptable no free play on the wheel, okay? That's all you have to say. You're gonna turn it whichever way you want. You turn it, 
let it go. My steering wheel responds normally from the uh, left. It is secure. My wheel responds normally from the right. It is secure. So I've done this part. Now I'm going to do my driver's seat. All you have to do is touch it and see there is no damages on the seat. It's secure. This one is the seat belt, of course you know, but we call it tether belt. You gotta make sure there's three parts. Tether belt secured to the cab. And there's two tether belts here. Tether belt secured to the ground and cab. No damage. Tether belt secured to the ground and damage. And um, now we're going to um, take the seat belt. Make sure it's not damaged. But mainly we wanna make sure that it works. So you have to do is flip it off. So my seatbelt works and flip it off. The seat, I wanna make sure my seat works back and forth. You know, you don't wanna do a pre trip, not do a pre trip on a truck you're driving like this, or you're driving like this, right? So you wanna make sure you're comfortable. So you wanna make sure the seat remains at a set position, which means that it sets for you. So my driver's seat is good and it remains at a set position. So now I've done the gauges, I've done the wheel, I've done the seat, and you can totally do this with the examiner. You're entitled to five minutes. It's not gonna take you 15 minutes to do the exteriors. So now, I like to start with, there's three things left. Glasses and mirrors, wipers, and heater and defroster. I like to start with my glass. Um, so you say, the glass is not broken, provides clear view, it's not damaged. My upper mirror is not cracked, missing, damaged, broken, provides clear view, and it is properly adjusted. Bottom mirror, not missing, damaged, broken, missing, provides clear view, and it is properly adjusted. If you have a hard time saying that word, you can say, I can see, or oh, adjust it to me. Because not everybody can say, I mean, it's, it's not easy. I usually say, all oh, mal adjusted, okay? So let's repeat it again. Not broken, damage missing, provide review, and it's adjusted properly. Front glass or windshield is not damaged, broken, provide review. Front mirror, if you do want to be, you can say the cross uh, convex. Mirror, not, broken, not missing, damage broken, provide review, is properly adjusted. Uh, passenger mirror or just mirror, not missing, damage broken, provide Views properly adjusted, bottom mirror, not missing damage broken, right view, properly adjusted, and the door glass. Woo! That is the hardest one for me, believe me. It shows me out of breath. Okay, get up, point out, wiper number one, not missing damage broken, wiper number two, not missing damage broken, there's a blade, there's a blade in it. Then you're going to push it here, and you're gonna see the fluid come out. So you're gonna see the fluid, she comes. Say, my windshield washer fluid works, it gives the view of the driver and the passenger. Now we're going to check all the levels. So you're gonna say level one works, and then you're gonna go two, three, four, level low and high works. All my wiper blades work, all my levels work. Now this one here, that's your defroster, that's your feet, and defroster, that's your feet, that's your face, that's your feet, that's your, what do you call that? Heater. This is your heat. Even if the dead of the road test is like 120 Celsius, you're burning, cannot go on this. You have to make sure to go on this. And for this, you have to do every single level, every single, what would you say, position, right? So we're gonna start with the defroster. So you go words, put it in one level, you have to get up and go like this. Defroster works one level, two, three, and four. Same thing here, the feet works one level, two level, so on and on. And, on. and then let's say the feet, one level, two and on. Blah, 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 maybe. Oof, this is hard. Ooh, okay, so <laughs> um, most of the time it is frustrating when you have to do this, but that gives you time to think. But make sure you individually do that. If the examiner decides to say that's enough, that it's okay. It doesn't mean that you're passing. All it means is that he knows what you're doing. So now I'm going to recap to make sure that I did not forget anything. Because he will wait for you to say I'm done. So I'm going to go... I give my gauges, lights, seat, seat belt, glasses, mirrors, wiping heat and the froster. I'm done. Am I done? Yes. So now we turn off the truck and there's two questions in the inside. But there are six different different questions. So let's start with the emergency equipment safety devices. Now you're allowed to grab this again, your schedule, and you're gonna say this here is your fire extinguisher. It's secure, it's not damaged. It's on the green, it has a tag somewhere, but you would say it has a tag. And then here you have your first aid kit. That's in case you get hurt. Or So you, you open it, you say it's not missing damage or defective, put it away. And then here, that's your triangle. What that is, 
It's an emergency when you get stuck in the middle of the road. You'll see those triangles mostly in the TTCs. That's what it is, okay? So my triangle kit is not missing damage or defective. So now we'll go here. Emergency equipment safety devices, missing damage or defective, minor defect. Report it, record it in the lockbook and continue driving and there's no major defects. Let's do the driver's seat. They ask you the driver's seat, it goes with the seat belt. Why? Because in my schedule is not highlighted. That's how you know. So we're going to check that the seat does not fail to, uh, is not damaged or fails to remain in a set position. Seat belt to a bed, secure missing or it's not working. So simple. My seat is all, it's not damaged, it's secure. My tether belt secured to the car, my seat belt not damaged. Secure belt, secure belt to the ground. Although you just did it, you still have to do it because it's part of the test. My seat works, it keeps on and off. My seat moves back and forth, it remains at a set position. Good. All right, so far I think I'm passing. I hope that my driving will be okay. People get nervous in the test. It's totally normal, okay? I get nervous for anything, right? especially when you guys are testing. I get nervous, believe me. So, uh, seat is damaged or fails to remain at set position, minor defect. Record it in the daily lock book, report or and continue driving. However, seat belt or tether belt, which is that in the ground, is insecure or missing, that would be big, or malfunction would be major defect. Record it, the book, report operator in, out of service. Okay, let's do the glasses and mirrors. Outside, inside. So now you can use this, and you can use these keywords. You're gonna say, the examiner will say, can you demonstrate check glasses and mirrors? You say, the glass is not broken, damaged, missing, provide to view, and it is not maladjusted. Mirror not missing, not, no, no, the, this one, I'm sorry, my apologies. Yeah, I can still make mistakes. Not broken, damage, provide to view. Mirror, not missing, damage, broken, provide to view. Properly adjusted, bottom mirror, so on and on and on and on. I don't need to go through the whole thing, but you know you have to check all the mirrors, and that's done, okay? So now we go on the minor defects, required mirror or window. Glass fails to provide the required view to the driver because of being cracked, damaged, broken, missing, or maladjusted. It is a minor defect. You record in the book, report operator, and continue, and there's no major defect. So again, you can drive with no glass. You can drive with no mirrors, okay? So how many we got? Three. Let's do the door. Now, the door is the only item that you have to do the same, whether it's outside and inside. So let's say the door, um, I'm gonna start from the outside, because I like to start from the outside. I think it's easier for me. So again, we're gonna flip this over. And then, let's say door that's not filled to close, opens and closes. Now we go inside. Close the door, switch down, push the door, close the security. Okay, door is under, cab. Occupant, compartment door fails to open, minor defect, report it. And the book, record operator, and continue driving. Any cab sleeper door fails to close securely. Major defect. Record it. Record it. But well, always say, always say, record in the lady lock pool report. I like to say record it, record it. It's a lot easier. Uh, major defect. Okay. Windshield wiper washers. So you turn your truck on. So again, wiper number one, that means the is broken. Wiper number two, that means it's broken. It has a blade. You push it. Uh, the fluid washer clears the view, the driver, the passenger, and you go first one level, two levels, one on that. Done. Now we're going to read my windshield wiper washer. Control of system malfunction. Wiper blade is damaged, missing, or fails to adequately clear the driver's field of vision. Minor defect. Record in the book, report brain, and continue driving. When the use of wipers washer required. When it's raining, when it's snowing, you know, the days that I don't like. Anyway, so you have to say, <laughs> when the use of wiper required is in a, such an rainy day, wiper or washer fails to adequately clear driver's field of vision. Area swept by the driver's wiper side would be a major defect, recorded, reported, and out of service. So we've done three, four. Okay. I'm not going to do heater and defroster because obviously you know. So again, they may say heater and defroster. I'm going to turn it on again. And you're gonna start all over again. The heat, the frost, works one level, level two, level blah, 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 blah. Just fast forward. Done. Are we okay with it? Yeah, right? Okay, good. So, again, um, control or system failure, minor defect. 
Record it, report it, continue driving. The froster fails to provide the unobstructed view through the windshield. That would be a major defect. Recording the book, report operator in, out of service. We got five. Hold on, we got one more. We did the uh, driver's seat, glasses and mirrors. We did the door, defroster. Oh, that would be for the C-Class. Okay, no, that's it. So out of those six questions, you are going to get two questions. I'm gonna recap again. Four in the exterior, inside cab, two in the interior. If you like my video, give me thumbs up. Hopefully you do. I do block the comments because sometimes uh, we get different comments for different knowledges, I would say. Uh, we like to think that we do a good job, so we're going to make sure that anything that is out there that changes again, so do not rely on this video. For now, do, but if there's anything that I know that I would change, if you've gone through the training, through the school right here, okay? TR Ontario. TR Ontario, not Toronto. TR Ontario. So, Toronto Drug Driving School, you can give us a call. Uh, we're at Western Wardenship. We've been here since, oh, since 17, 18 years. Uh, anyways, it was a pleasure. Hopefully, you liked the video.